Now today we're going to demonstrate how to set up your EXP2 um, so you can spray the Rhino PP1195. Now it's, uh, uh, it's uh, two products, we've got our resin which is in the white drum, we've got our isocyanate which is in the red drum. Now the isocyanate, I'm going to call it iso, it just makes it easier um, as we do this uh, video. So first of all, what we're going to do is uh, get our resin uh, ready um, to spray. Now the resin needs to be stirred. If it's come out of storage, it's been sitting for some months, you need to stir it for at least one hour before you start to spray. Now we have to heat the product up so it would be plenty of time for it to stir while we're heating up the product. So for, for today's demonstration, I'm going to turn it on now. Um, this is product we've used before, so it's not quite full. So what we're going to do is just turn the uh, air stirrer on, just at a slow rate. Um, if it was coming out of storage, what you'd want to be doing is stirring it quite quickly for at least about 15 minutes, get it all stirred up and get it nice and consistent. So then when we do apply uh, the product, it'll be nice and even and um, it'll, it'll uh, look absolutely great. Now, with the um, resin, so what we do is we just keep it stirring. Then what we want to do is just want to show you uh, the isocyanate, or the iso. Now, we're in the red drum, as we, as I mentioned. Now, with the iso, uh, once the uh, uh, product comes in contact with moisture, it crystallises. So what we need to do is any um, threads that uh, you may be using throughout the process, we need to put grease on it. Now we generally use uh, Vaseline, it's cheap and it's easy to apply. So um, generally what we do is when we screw the uh, pump on, we just smear the thread with grease. As you can see we've got grease on there. So when you come to take it off, um, undo the uh, thread for the transfer pump, um, it'll be nice and easy for you to do so and it'll be a quick turnaround. We also want to do that with our uh, spear or our return line. Now I've got grease on the lock nut here, so we want to make sure that uh, it's got plenty of grease so it's easy for it to come apart. But we also want to keep this air tight. Now you'll notice on the drum we've got um, our air dryers. So uh, basically these two canisters that stick at the top of the drum. Now we don't want any moisture getting into the ISO. Now if we get too much moisture into the ISO, what will happen is um, when you go to spray it, you'll get pinholes, you may even get blisters. So what we want to do is try and make sure all our, th all our threads um, are sealed so we make sure we don't get too much, we don't get any moisture in our ISO. So we need to heat up our ISO and our resin. So to heat it up nice and quickly, wait, and you've got full drums, what we can do is up the temperatures. So what we can do is come across one page, and you can see I've set it at 75. Now normally while we're spraying, we usually have the uh, ISO at 65 and the resin at 55. But to heat those drums up quicker, we've just set them at 75. Now to uh, adjust the temperature setting, you've got the up up and down buttons, so if we want to go higher we can, or if we want to go lower, we just use the uh, buttons to do so. So we want to keep them at 75 uh, at the moment. Get the drums, uh, get the machine recirculating and heat up that product. And by having it on recirc, um, on job mode, which I'll show you how to do uh, in a second, we'll get it uh, nice and warm very, very quickly. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our home page and um, what we want to do is put it in job mode. Now job mode is this button right here, you can see J14. So now that's the amount of strokes that it does. So what we want to do is keep it around about the 14 or 15. So to activate uh, job mode, you press uh, the job mode, the green light will come on and then you press start. And you can hear the machine start to fire up and it's pumping away. Now you can see our, our temperatures. Now our ISO, which is our A, is at 56 and our uh, resin is at 59. So what we want to do now is just let that heat up a little bit more. Then um, once it gets to the uh, operating temperature, uh, the ISO at 65, what we'll do is we'll just get, we'll go back into our temperature settings, bring them down to our running temperatures, and then we can go from there. Uh, two buttons here. So that's for our ISO, 
and this is for our resin. Now you'll see the two green lights, that means that they're working and they're activated. Now what we want to do also is heat up our hoses, so we want to turn that on as well. That's set on 65, that's our uh, operating for our running temperatures. they can't go any further there's no fluid running through so we've pressurized our hoses now what we need to do is start the actual machine up you can still see the little differences in the uh, pressures but uh, that's not still to do with the viscosity so we'll just uh, press the start and then you'll see the pressures start to rise okay so we've got a little bit of difference with our pressures still so what we um, 
just uh, stabilizing now. There is a little bit difference in pressure. So what we can do is um, we can just open up the, uh, the ISO valve and just drop it a little bit. Open it up just a tad. Okay, so now the uh, EXP2 is, um, is all ready to go and we're ready to spray. Our product is all up uh, to temperature. So just a couple of things before we start. Now we want to have our safety gear on. We want to have our overalls on to protect us from any overspray. And of course, we've got our respirator as well. Now we need to make sure you're wearing this any time that you're spraying. So uh, everything's up to temperature, so we're ready to go. So I've got my test panel that I'm going to uh, uh, spray today. Now I'm going to spray in a cross hatch pattern which means we'll go one way uh, and then we'll go across the other way. Usually you want about 0.4 of a mil on each pass. Now the first pass will be nice and light then the second and the uh, rest of our passes will be a little bit heavier as we go on. Now I've got a test sample here so once I'm done we can get a good close look at it and make sure that it's uh, uh, the uh, consistency that we want and the product that we want to, uh, to have uh, ready to go. So uh, what we want to do is first of all our gun's ready to go. Um, what we want to do is turn our valves on. Now the machine's all set up so when you turn the valves on you'll feel a thump that means it's got pressure and you're ready to go. So what you also want to do is uh, just make sure that you do a bit of a test spray before you actually um, go and spray on your um, on your substrate. Just want to make sure that it's spraying nicely and uh, everything is uh, looking good before you start applying. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, just a little bit uh, on this uh, panel that I've got and then um, we'll get spraying. We want to make sure our air is on. We just want to make sure that grease is out. Then we want to just release uh, the uh, piston and now we'll be ready to spray. That's a nice spray. Or I'll start spraying now. Get 
basically you can shut them down now and that's right to leave for uh, to when you start next. Now we want to make sure, put a bit of grease over the top as well, um, over the top of the tip so if there's any chemical it doesn't go off. So uh, the tip all done. Okay, so this is our finished product. You can see it's got a little bit of orange peel, that's that wavy effect, but it's nice and smooth. It's got no pinholes in it. Uh, it's nice and even as well. So uh, have a look just there. So uh, a little bit of overspray here. So that's where I probably didn't just quite um, uh, overlap enough, but if not, it's nice and smooth and everything's great. And that just peels off, as you can see. So um, that's the underside, nice and smooth again. There's no pinholes, there's no water uh, in it, and it's uh, beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've finished spraying, we want to uh, cool down the rudder. So what we do is we turn all the heaters off. Then we make sure it's on reset. And then what we do is we just go on uh, job mode. For about 15 minutes um, without the heaters on and they'll allow everything to cool down and then you won't have any issues when it'll start up next time. So just let it for about 15 minutes or so, just let it uh, cool down and uh, that's about it. Now if you want to heat them up a little bit quicker, what you can do is um, go across um, one uh, one screen and we can go up to about 75. Heat that up, heat the drums up really quickly, especially when the drums are really full, because it'll take a fair while to heat up. But bring them back down to the designated heat, which uh, temperature, which is 65 and 55 for us um, today. So just turn it up, get the grease circing, and you can heat it up that way. If you want to heat it up even a little bit quicker, what you can do is put go back to your main screen, put it in job mode, and uh, about 15 is maximum speed, and that will get the fluid flowing a lot quicker. And then uh, still on recirc, of course, and uh, that will heat up the drums um, uh, much, much faster. Then cut it down. Once they get to 45, bring all your temperatures down uh, to the designated uh, specification, and then go for it, and then you can start to spray. Now, when you are doing a, a, a any job, especially with a Rhino product, you're lucky to have the uh, uh, TDS, um, nice and handy, just in case you need to refer to it. Um, it's got the, the temperatures um, that it needs to be set at, uh, just down the bottom here, what pressures and what size um, a tip you may need, all the, the range of tips you can use. So always have, have that handy, um, it's just good to uh, just to refer to. Uh, and just a couple other things before we go much further, is uh, we want to go across um, two screens. Now what you want to do is make sure that when you replace a drum, that you adjust the uh, levels. So um, at the moment these levels are, uh, are quite low, so if I was to change the drums, you just go up the uh, the bunk all the way up to uh, to about 205 they usually go to and uh, so so when you are um, replacing your drums just make sure and then you can go through it during the day and see how much um, chemical you've got left so you want to do that for the A and B and then that will, um, so that, that's a good reminder. So if you are topping up the drums or you're changing the drums over, make sure you do that. That just gives you a good reference point when you're spraying during the day. So we can just go back, um, and you, as you can see, um, every time you look at the screen, it's got that the drums are full and it'll um, go down as they um, get used up. So uh, that's, a, that's really uh, important to do, just so, um, just give you an idea. You don't want to run out of um, chemical when you're halfway through a job. Okay, well, um, what we'll do now is we'll start doing the maintenance and uh, we'll go from there. We'll just uh, take the plug out. First, what we need to do is turn the uh, uh, valve off so we don't get, lose too much fluid. You want to have a bucket because when you undo your plug where the uh, filters are located, you will get uh, chemical coming out. Always wear gloves.
Okay, so uh, part of our maintenance is to clean the filters in the pickup pick manifold. So what we're going to need to do is make sure we've got gloves on, we've got our safety goggles on, especially with the ISOs inside. Um, the chemical itself, if it gets into your eyes, it can crystallise. So it's really important to make sure you wear safety glasses whenever you're working on the, especially the ISO side. Gloves as well. So what you want to do is just put the uh, socket on. And what we want to do is just give it a tap and uh, that's nice and loose. Now that we know that it's loose, what we want to do is just close the valve off. We don't want to lose too much of the chemical. Need to have a bucket to catch the chemical that's uh, in the manifold itself. So we unscrew that all the way. Bring your bucket up, catch the chemical. Just want to hold that bucket there for a sec. Now this is the filter. So the filter has got a little bit of uh, gunk in it. So uh, as you can see, this might have been picked up from the bottom of the drum or if um, the machine's been sitting for a while. So what we will do is clean that in acetone. Now if it's really bad, we can clean it in our BT cleaner, which is our Rhino um, boiling temperature cleaner, which you put in a um, deep fryer um, and then that will dissolve all those, uh, um, all the, uh, of the stuff that's caught uh, on the uh, filter itself. So uh, I'll go away, I'll clean that filter, and I'll show you how to put it back on. Okay, so the filter's uh, been cleaned out, so I washed that in some acetone because it wasn't uh, built up too much. But what you need to check is um, that uh, the seam where the actual uh, filter uh, mesh actually joins, you need to make sure that's intact because if there's a high buildup of debris, what can happen is that can split and of course that will let debris through any your lines then into your garden which will cause um, uh, outer ratio problems. So nice and clean, so I washed it in some acetone, um, I just got the uh, blower and just blew any of the debris that's left. Now the filter itself sits inside the fitting just like that. Now with the ISO, you always need to put grease on the fittings. Um, this has a O-ring to help it seal, but uh, if any ISO, ISO uh, gets onto that thread and there's no grease, it will actually uh, crystallise and you'll have to heat it up to get it out. So it's really important that uh, whenever you take any fitting off from the ISO, that you put a nice blob of uh, grease, could be Vaseline, um, or the uh, Graco uh, grease. It, it really doesn't matter, but you want to be using Vaso um, or the uh, Graco uh, grease. Now, once that's done, all you need to do is uh, just grab a rag. You just want to make sure that there's nothing in here that's going to stop us from sealing. Just uh, give it a good clean. And then we just put that back up. It's got a nice coarse thread, so it won't um, be too hard to start and then put your ratchet back on now this doesn't have to be super tight um, so just nice and firm just hang on to the um, manifold and that's that filter done so what we'll do is we'll just go over to the um, to the uh, uh, resin side and we'll do that now. Don't forget always turn your pump back on And we'll just go over here to the uh, resin side. So once again, make sure that um, uh, it's uh, gonna come done. Yep, that's nice and loose. So what we're gonna do is just close that valve once again just undo it I just undo that, come out, nice. Once again, we've got a little bit of debris in there. So that's actually picked that up from the bottom of the drum. 
So uh, that's why it's really important to make sure that we uh, that you do this. If you're doing uh, a big spray, it'd be worth doing after every day. But if you're only doing small jobs, uh, maybe once a week. But definitely do um, give it a good clean because if this becomes blocked, once again you'll have issues of it being out of ratio. So I'll go clean this up, then I'll show you how to put it back in. Now we've cleaned uh, the filter and uh, the fitting as well. Remember we've got the O-ring. Now the filter once again just sits inside there. Give it a, some grease, makes it easier to pull apart next time. Yeah, you may notice I only did one side at a time. The reason for this is we don't want to get them mixed up. If you put them in the same bucket with the ISO and the resin, uh, you're going to get a chemical reaction and then it's going to get uh, it's going to go off and it's going to be a lot harder to clean. So uh, the best way that I've found is just do one at a time. It might take you a little bit longer, but at least you know that the ISO and the resin fittings and gauze or filters are going into the, uh, into the same uh, manifold. So we just give that a screw, get that started. Put our ratchet on. Let's get it on nicely, it just needs to be firm. Turn your um, belt back on. So what we want to do now is um, get our machine and we just want to recircuit, get any air out of uh, the system. We don't want any air in the uh, ISO, so let's just uh, turn the pump on. On research, so he'll push it through. So what we'll do is we'll just let that research through, get all that air out, and then uh, the machine is right to start. So let's just fire it up, just make sure everything's right. Levels are all set, and what we want to do, we can shut them right down now. So, okay, so we've done all our mates, we've cleaned the filters, everything's settled down. Now we've just uh, been recircuiting for about 10 minutes. We want to purge all the air out of the system, especially on the ISO side. We don't want any, any oxygen uh, in that box, if not, um, the chemical will crystallize, and then the machine will need to be pulled apart and cleaned up. So, what we're going to do now is do our final shutdown. First, what we want to do is make sure that we've got it in part. Now, um, when the machine at night or at the end of the day, or even if you're not operating for a couple of hours, you need to make sure it's in the right position. Now, to park, all you need to do is have the machine on and then press the park. And it'll go through the system, and what it'll do is just make sure that the plunger or the pumps are in the right position so we don't have any issues on our next fire up. Once we've done that, we can turn our pumps off, our transfer pumps off. And we're right to shut the machine down. So, okay, so everything's all settled. All our uh, heaters are off, which we turned off earlier in the uh, video. Um, so all we need to do is just shut it down. So just tip the power. You can tell that it's shut down. There's no icons on either side of the temperatures. Um, and uh, so that's how, that's a, a great way to look at it. Then you just turn off the, sh the uh, main switch on the side. Now, a couple of things you want to do, just make sure that you park the machine every time that you leave the machine. It just makes the, 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 just makes the maintenance a lot, lot less. Clean the filters out, and of course, if you have any issues with our uh, PP uh, 1195 product, you can contact our uh, technical department by email, or give us a call, and we can help you out any time you need it. Thanks very much.